Well, when you look at your career at this point, uh, you're in your 60s. You got shot. You got run over. Uh, you had money on your head. You know, you got your house burned down. You went to court and ultimately didn't win. Do you feel like you regret, you know, devoting your life, you know, to law enforcement? And do you wish like you had taken a different path in your life? Or do you still ultimately feel proud of the work that you've done? And, you know, things just went wrong at one point, but that still doesn't take away from, you know, your career. Well, the the way my career ended and the way I was treated by ATF, it caused me to question everything that I felt like I believed in. Everything that I felt like I stood for uh, turned out to not be true. But with that said, to answer your question, uh, with, with all the trauma and and drama that was throughout my career, would I do it again? Um, I, I would do it again. I would do it better. I would do it cleaner. Um, I wouldn't make the same mistakes, you know, with, with the benefit of hindsight. Um, and I've always thought if, if not for me, um, and, and that's an arrogant statement, if not for people like me who are willing to take a stand against the predators on behalf of good and innocent people out there who just want a peaceful life, then who's going to do it? Who's going to do it if, if, if I don't do it, if we don't do it? So would I do it again? Yes. I would just do it better. Well, Jay Dobbins, I appreciate you coming in. Um, you know, these days when it comes to law enforcement, it's a very polarizing topic. There's people who love the police. There's people that hate the police. But ultimately, I think the police has an important role in the world and you stopping mass bombings and hundreds, if not thousands of people dying. I don't think anyone is against that. You know, whether, you know, even if you don't like the police and you don't believe in snitching or whatever else, I don't think anyone wants casinos blown up or bombs going off in federal buildings and so forth. And by you going undercover and stopping those types of plots, I definitely salute you. Well, you know what? I, I think regardless of our politics, regardless of uh, what position we take in society or culture, I think we can agree that we don't want violence. We ultimately, regardless of where we stand, we all want the same things. We want, um, we want to be safe in our homes, in our neighborhoods. We want our kids to get a good education and give them a chance at life. Um, we want to receive a, a fair wage and live with dignity. Um, and there's people out there who are intent on disrupting that. And then there's also people that every morning their alarm clock goes off. And they put their feet on the ground and they have a cup of coffee with their wife and pour some Cheerios for their kids and they kiss their families goodbye and they go out and do their best to stand in between the good and innocent people in the world and the violence and the predators. And those are our law enforcement officers. Um, and, and, and they do it knowing that there's people out there that are going to ambush them, attack them, spit on them, videotape them. Um, harass them, try to defund them, and they go anyways. They go and they leave their own families to protect somebody else's family. Um, and so, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You hit it on the head. The way that law enforcement is viewed in today's world is upside down. Final question. The Hells Angels are still around, still a very strong organization. Uh, some of the other Groups that you mentioned, like MS-13 um, and so forth, are still around. Do you still feel like there's a price on your head? And do you still feel that something may happen to you when you walk out the door? Like you mentioned, you were on, a, on an airline and suddenly you get into a fight with a bunch of Hells Angels. You know, you're no longer undercover. You know, you're, you know, this is not your first interview. You've done multiple interviews. You've been on TV shows. People will see you and recognize you, especially if they're in an organization like the Hells Angels. Uh, so do you still feel coming out, out of your house that you have to have a gun on you and you have to look over your shoulder? Or do you feel like enough time has passed where whatever those beefs were, it's over? Well, you know, it's been 20 years since that investigation ended. Uh, time does help. Um, I'll never be forgiven. 
um, they'll they'll never uh, they'll never like or respect me. I understand that. Um, I I don't put myself in a bad situation. Uh, I don't go to spots where I'm going to have trouble. I don't want a problem. Um, I'll walk away from problems. I'll run away from problems if given an opportunity. Um, I, I I'm not looking to square up with anybody. And um, but like, do I know what they're capable of? Absolutely, I do. Do I live in fear? I don't live in fear because if I live in fear, they win. If I have to hide or wear a disguise or a mask, they win. But I live with caution, um, understanding who they are and what they're about and, and the things they stand for. But in the end, like really Jay Dobbins in Operation Black Biscuit was nothing more than a speed bump you know, in the history and the legend and the myth of the Hells Angels. They're bigger and stronger and badder and nastier now than they were when they crossed paths with me. So um, I'm not sure that there's much motivation for them to come after me. Ultimately, they won. Well, yeah, the thing about the Hells Angels that I've always heard, like, I'm not sure if it was the uh the casino brawl that happened but i remember there was this huge incident that happened with a bunch of biker gangs and ultimately nobody cooperated and no charges were filed you know what i'm talking about well if you if you look back historically to the uh to the uh altamont motor speedway which was like you know really where the hell's angels became like their name became uh, public knowledge on the tip of everybody's tongue when they were thinking about outlaw motorcycle gangs. Um, the Hells Angels were protect, protecting the Rolling Stones at that concert. Um, uh, a concert goer was beaten and stabbed to death in front of 300,000 people, and there were no witnesses because no one wants to speak up against these guys because they understand, man, there's a price to pay. You want to open your mouth against the Hells Angels? Everybody knows there's a price to pay for that. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I've read Sonny Barger's book. Uh, it's a very interesting organization, and it's a worldwide organization at this point. And, you know, and the one thing that I remember reading throughout the book was everyone in that group would not cooperate. So when it came down to it, everyone would stay silent. And ultimately, a lot of times, charges would be dropped because there was no there was no snitch in the group that would ultimately tell on everyone, which you see in a lot of other gangs. The Hells Angels are unique uh, in that regard, and uh, which is probably why they're still around uh, to this day. Well, um, hundreds of charters, thousands of members worldwide on every continent. Uh, their their brotherhood is strong. Um, like what you have to go through to earn that patch and to become a member. Um, builds loyalty and commitment. And for those true believers, the Hells Angels, it's their religion. It's more important to them uh, than their family, than their kids, their wives, their job, their home, their money, their cars, their motorcycles, their dogs. It's the most important thing in their life. And uh, many of them have uh, spilled blood for it. Many of them have died for it. It's, uh, it's no nonsense with those dudes. Um, and like I said earlier, they're some of the baddest cats on the planet. They are not to be taken lightly or underestimated. Well, that's what it is. Uh, Jay Dobbins, I appreciate you uh, sharing your story and I wish you the best. Thank you for having me. Take care. Peace.